Alrighty guys, it is Qua Man here today and I'm bringing you another debunking Dragon Ball discussion and today we're going to be talking about Bardock and his popularity throughout the Dragon Ball series. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into this video as I found this interesting forum on dbzeta.net in which these guys are pretty much talking about a lot of their reasons for why Bardock is a popular character. I'm going to put my two cents on it and I'm really interested to seeing your thoughts in the comment section below. So let's get straight into this video. So why is bardock overrated so this fearless boo guy with that scary ass picture says i'm not talking about power but his popularity he just appeared in two movies and some black flash and his popularity is just like broly so that's a very interesting point bardock is one of the characters in the dragon ball series that really hasn't been in much but yet he's so popular and he's been in so many games and off series stuff so let's scroll down here so let's look at this guy here his name is southern gothic with a funny picture of donald trump <laughs> and he's saying not a lot is known about bardock like broly a lot of his character remains a mystery and that lets people fill in certain aspects of his character to their liking people can apply their own logic to a character like bardock more than say goku since we saw goku grow up and know almost everything about him sort of like darth mole the guy just shows up and looks awesome so he's easy to like this guy is hitting the nail on the coffin with one of the points in my opinion here guys because if you think about it bardock to some degree in terms of his appearance he's kind of like a badass more so anti-hero version of goku and the reason why I'm saying this is if you look at Bardock, you know, obviously with the scars on his face, kind of like if you compare future Gohan to, I guess you can say, the present time Gohan, he kind of has that mystique to him. He had like a do or die attitude. And I think that's kind of the approach that Bardock gives. Obviously, future Gohan's more of a good guy. But the interesting thing is here is that he makes a really good point about the whole development of his character. If you look at Goku, if you look at, you know, Gohan from the present timeline, if you look at Tien, Vegeta and Piccolo one thing we can say about those three guys in particular outside of Goku and Gohan is that looking at Tien, Vegeta and Piccolo those were three characters that were originally villains in the series obviously you know Tien was an antagonist as he was training under the crane hermit you know if we look at Piccolo obviously he's King Piccolo's son and he was a major villain at the end of Dragon Ball and then obviously you know Piccolo was kind of on the fence at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z and then if you go to Vegeta we all know his whole story he went through a major character realization process in which Vegeta has completely changed from what he originally was so when you look at it from that perspective since we know these characters that much there isn't that much mystique and mystery that we can get into him but bardock because he's just goku's father he opposed frieza he died everybody kind of wants to know more about him and i think that leads into why bardock is thrown in so many different things so i can definitely see that point unlike goku and gohan obviously all right, so moving down here to the next guy who also has another funny picture. Y'all niggas be trolling. We've had some funny pictures so far. We have a scary looking Majibu. We've had Donald Trump, and now we have this meme here. And he's pretty much saying not just that, but video game wise, he's appeared in about as many as the legendary super steroid user himself. The prime example is the two of them being the only playable characters in Burst Limit that aren't linked to the main storyline of the manga. Very good point here. Let me add a quick note about video games. One interesting thing I've noticed about the Dragon Ball video games is that they always add a very interesting mystique to the characters because a lot of times you know if you look at maybe a bardock or a future gohan or even a broly to some degree we really haven't seen these characters fight as much as other characters so not as much as you know obviously documented about their techniques but these video games really expand on you know the type of attacks they use and i think that obviously adds a lot towards their personality and bardock because he's been in a lot of video games and people have played with him on these video games it kind of creates more interest in learning about his actual character so i definitely think captain cadaver has a really 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 good point here so let's move on down here so this <laughs> my goodness is this like weird weird pictures for like a forum day re-elect bernie 2020 all right this guy's saying here because Bardock is Goku's father and somewhat a likable Saiyan, I don't deny that he actually looks really cool, but maybe it's just the prospect of seeing Goku as a true Saiyan. 
how he might have grown up to be. I think that's a pretty good point. Bardock, because he looks so much like Goku, you know, with, you know, more of a darker appeal towards him, that obviously kind of has a very likable approach. People like badasses to some degree. And let me read this here. When Bernie tries to save the world, his hair goes crazy. When Goku tries to save the world, his hair goes crazy. Bernie is a super <laughs> People are really creative. All right, so this guy is pretty much here saying, hence your current profile is Bardock. All right, so let's go down here. All right, so this guy down here, his name is Super Saiyan Overlord 1007. He says, because he's Goku's daddy, the father of Bardock special was pretty cool, and most people assume him to be the original Super Saiyan because of the episode of Bardock special, no matter how many times you tell them it's not canon. People also assume him to be a good guy because of, Funimation, of the Funimation dialogue and how he rebelled against Frieza when in actuality, Bardock was kind of a dick. He pillaged other planets like other Saiyans and enjoyed it. He didn't really care about Goku even forgetting he was born and rebelling against Frieza doesn't really make someone a good guy. Vegeta rebelled against Frieza and he was still evil. Bardock is cool but most people overrate him because of the false image that Funimation created. People assume that is the real Bardock. Okay, I kind of agree with this guy, Super Saiyan Overlord 1007, but I also kind of disagree with him in the same sense. I think if you look at it from the Funimation dub's point of view, it kind of makes Bardock more likable, I guess you can say. And I guess you can say the Funimation dub in some sense kind of made Bardock have more of a heroic approach and more of a caring nature. The Japanese dub, it was the complete opposite. Like Bardock was a lot more cold. They didn't really hype up this whole hero elements towards Bardock and a lot of the dialogue was changed. And obviously there's a lot of dialogue that you could talk about in the future about this. That's another video for its own self. But the point I'm trying to say is, is that both sides give you a reason to like Bardock. Funimation makes you like him for the likable nature of him and how he kind of had like a change of heart and then the Japanese version gives you more of a dark badass guy who kind of went out with a bang and I think those two reasons Super Saiyan Overlord actually make Bardock popular for both Japanese fans and English dub fans. So let's move down here. This guy again is saying, if anything, the version of him portrayed him in the Japanese version was more interesting. The anti-hero archetype is a lot more interesting than the more heroic way in which Funimation portrayed him. So yeah, so you could say the Japanese dub was more interesting. I personally have a slight preference towards the Japanese dub because for when it pertains to Bardock in particular, because I just feel like it was more realistic to how Saiyans were at that time. But nonetheless, I still think the Funimation dub added at least an interesting portrayal towards him. But both can be accepted for what they are. Alrighty, and moving down to this last guy here with help for privacy. He says, in the manga, the original Akira Toriyama's work, Bardock was supposed to be a low-class warrior. Then, Toei wanted to make the movies commercial. So just because Bardock was the main character, he was given away special power privileges of the elite scenes. Very good point. Yes, that is true. Bardock... Obviously, if you look at Goku's lineage, was supposed to be a low-class Saiyan warrior, and obviously, they overrated his character for the specials to obviously market him. Very smart business decision, but at the same time, it kind of took away from what the obvious original approach was. If you guys remember, in the original manga, Bardock was barely shown in the manga. He was shown in one panel in which Frieza was pretty much telling Goku that Goku looks a lot like that Saiyan who opposed him before he blew up planet Vegeta and that obviously led to the whole Bardock story but the thing that I find interesting here and I want to add towards this guy is that the ultimate reason why I think Bardock is so popular is because he has had so many different variations of his story and it makes people even more curious about him Let's look at the Bardock, the father of Goku special. Let's look at the episode of Bardock special where he went Super Saiyan for crying out loud and he fought against, you know, obviously chilled. Then let's go to Dragon Ball Xenoverse. If you look at Dragon Ball Xenoverse, they even had their own time breaker Bardock story. And then if you look at Dragon Ball Heroes, you look at that and they're playing with his story so much. We're, we're often conflicted with what version of Bardock do we accept? Because until Toriyama, you know, obviously, you know, produced that manga 
you know, side story, I always accepted the Bardock the Father of Goku special because I thought that's what the story was supposed to be, you know? And then, you know, obviously, if you add the episode of Bardock, which is obviously not canon, it's kind of like more of a what-if scenario in which Bardock went to the past and became Super Saiyan and fought one of Frieza's elders, and that obviously led to the whole threat of why, you know, Frieza's people are so scared of Super Saiyans. I feel like all of these things add towards him. He's been in so much Dragon Ball media. There's no way Bardock cannot be a popular character. So guys, that's been my video for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this forum analysis. I really had a lot to talk about here today, guys. This is probably the funnest debunking Dragon Ball discussion I've had. This one's a lot more subjective, as I said before. So please, in the comment section below, tell me why you think Bardock is such a popular character I'm really interested to hear what you have to say in the comment section below and I will be responding to a lot of your comments so with everything said please remember to rate comment and subscribe and remember as I always say to have a great day guys